Welcome to an arcade showcase. This is my Time Crisis 2 arcade machine. Um, I'm going to step you through it. So it is not really a Time Crisis 2 arcade machine. What it is, is a PlayStation 2 um, set up to play exactly like, not exactly like, as close as you can get to a Time Crisis 2 experience without being the real thing. So, I'm going to step you through this today, talk about some um, things that I did, talk about some prices. So, let's go through it. A couple of things before we get into a um, close inspection of this machine. The cabinet itself. This was a cabinet that I picked up off of a local seller um, when I lived in Victoria. It was a gutted machine. Um, the marquee that came with this machine was a Raw Thrills and it is a Target Terror um, marquee that came with this. I don't know if this cabinet was custom built for that or not. I would dare say that it is, was not the cabinet that it came in um, and that this was a cabinet that either held something else or that had been um, previously made to be able to fit a bunch of different arcade machines um, conversions. So to chuck one in, convert it to something else when that's not as popular and um, continue making some money. This is the only arcade machine that I have that has a CRT, um, so a tube TV. I prefer, and I know this is blasphemy to a lot of arcade um, collectors, but I prefer LCD screens. Um, this one I could not get away with because if you want to run a PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 um, gun games and um, any type of light gun games, you need to have a CRT TV. So one of the old styles, the Fatbacks, and this one in here is an LG, which has been disguised with, a, a, with some back glass that's been painted. Okay, so the arcade cabinet itself. I, since I have had arcade machines, um, I started with this arcade machine and this one costs real money, real money, and the rest of the arcade machines that I have made or upgraded or uh, things in time have come from buying and selling video games and other things off of eBay and places like that. This one did not cost me very much at all. The reason being is I held out until I could find a cabinet for the right price. Now I won an auction um, because I was willing to pick something up in a regional location and this cabinet was going, it had a starting price of $100 on eBay auction. I won it for $100. Um, the seller was very gracious in making sure that they um, essentially they kept to that price. Um, some sellers would not have, this one did. They knew I was getting this for a bargain, they even helped me load it into the back of my car, which it just fit in um, my Nissan Pathfinder. And I took it home for $100. Um, which I paid for in cash. Now, once I had that done, then we get into the different things that I've had to do to try and um, make it look like a Time Crisis 2 arcade machine. So let's have a little bit of a talk about that. I found this image for the marquee on Google. I tried to find the highest res one that I could. I then took it to a printing company and they printed me up one in a bit of a gloss that um, would still allow some light to shine through. It only has one light bulb in the back there and it looks pretty good considering that it's a cheap print. Um, I think the print itself cost me about $10 and then it has a light bulb behind it. So that's the first thing, not a real marquee it's just behind a piece of plastic and I made sure that I had uh, went into GIMP 
which is a free image manipulation program on um, on Windows and I changed it to the actual sizing that I needed and then I cut it out and I put it behind the the um, the plastic there then I needed to um, add in a stand for the TV that was cheap um, I bought some black paint for the back of the marquee I bought a piece of plexiglass which oh it's just plastic and it's the thinnest type I could find on eBay I think that was around $30 um, and then I have pushed in the sorry pushed back the TV and I mounted um, the plastic in there then on the front I have three guns um, that is a PlayStation 2 gun it is is a gun con 2 and then I have an original PlayStation gun on there and I have so pack away all the cords um, so that it does have enough length that's about as far as I want to go back um, but I do pack them away to make it look nicer it's just a nicely nice a nicer way to present so I have a PlayStation 1 gun there a PlayStation 2 gun here and then I have a another gun that does both and it's supposed to have rumble as well the rumble is pretty atrocious i think this one was called a scorpion if i recall um, correctly it is my least favorite it's definitely worth getting the um the guns that playstation either made or that they backed so the gun cons um i had these two holsters in it ready it has star buttons here that do nothing i mounted another bracket there and let's have a look at the rest of the machine. Right, getting up nice and close here. I um, this already had some holes, so I used the holes that were here to add in um, my gun um, cords and one of those holes needed to be bigger than the others they already had all these um, drilled out bits in here as well so I simply added some um, bolts in there with some nuts on the back to try and hide it, some of these the bigger holes um, and then I added this hook it hides one of the holes um, the biggest hole for to get the actual PlayStation 1 gun in, you need to get in um, through quite a big piece. So that hides that. And then, again, another hole that it already had. So repurposed it for the, for the pedal, and there's the pedal there. This does nothing, it's purely for show. If I took it out, then I would have a hole in the machine. So I keep it in there. Now with the pedal, this is simply a, it's called a foot switch here. I think it was a, like a sewing machine pedal and it has one micro switch in it that clicks um, and that I've set for when I click it down it makes a connection and um, that causes the game to recognize it as a button being pushed um, which then in turn makes your character pop out of cover and when you let it go then they go back into cover on games like time crisis and other games that are set up for that so let's have a look a little bit more inside okay it's going to be hard to see in here and it's going to look like a bit of a mess, but it is a lot um, more organized than it seems. Simply, these are the cords that go from the um, front pieces of the PlayStation 2 up to out, they're the 
the guns and I have ones that need to go to the yellow port of the AV. Um, and they're an easy setup. If you look up on e, um, sorry, on YouTube or anything um, like a any one of the manuals, even the manuals in the actual PlayStation games themselves, you will see how the guns are set up. So that's no mystery. Um, you'll be able to find those there. So what I have is my console here. Um, it is fixed down. So there's no screws in there, but I've used these brackets that make sure that the console is put in place. That's for when I need to move the cabinet at all, but it also keeps things nice and still so that if there's any bumps for any reason in here when I'm getting things out, um, it does not destroy the game discs. In here I also have a Wii. It is hard to see because they're both black. So PlayStation 2, not the slim, it's the fat version and a Nintendo Wii. Then I have an AV three-way selector, even though I only need two. So I have PlayStation and Wii set up so I can flick from one to the other. And they just go straight up into the TV. Then I have, on the side I have the Wii guns. And at the moment those Wii guns are set up with nunchucks. It's not the most glamorous um, setup that the Wii could have thought of, um, but it works. Then I have a tray underneath. So I have this tray underneath, which is handy for hiding things. Normally I would hide my nunchucks and things, but just to give you an idea of how that um, is set up. Then I have some other Wii accessories, some other um, things that I've tried out. Um, and here is another one of those foot switches. So I bought two at the time because they were super cheap. And that is what it looked like when it came to me, except without the dog hair. Right, the only other things that I have in there are a cheap um, AA battery recharger. So that is for the Wii controllers. So I keep that in there. And that one was just one that I found online as well. And there's the instructions. I've kept that from the box from the, it's called a Dragon Plus um, PS1 and PS2 gun. You can put batteries in it and it has a laser sight. It has rumble. Um, the rumble's not very good. It's not for every click of the button. Rather, it's more like a hold it down and it will click, 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 click. But if you um, push once, then it'll kind of, it, sometimes it only gives a half motion and sometimes it gives the other the full click. So it's not, it's not a great, um, it's not a great gun by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. So I know that there was a flashing screen because as soon as I hit record, I'm not sure the difference um, between looking through the viewfinder and when I hit record, but as soon as I hit record, this starts to flicker. It definitely does not do that in person. This is um, my machine. I had mentioned that I had a Wii in there as well. That is the case. I also have a Wii in there with Wii guns. I only put the PlayStation gun um, controllers out here because it is a Time Crisis 2 um, kind of look. And then I hide the Wii stuff in there and swap it over when um, we want to have a go at that. There is a Wii sensor here. There are, what do I have in terms of speakers? It's just the television speakers. They're built in, um, just like most CRT televisions are. And that is really it. Two consoles. So I have the PlayStation 2, which plays PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. The Wii um, set up as well. You need to make sure that you've got your sensor bar if you're doing any Wii stuff. Um, you could do this with a, an LCD TV if you were just going with the Wii like gun shooters, but as soon as you put a PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2 in there, it needs to be CRT for these light guns. They do not work with um, the new LCDs. That could change in future, but um, as in there might be someone who makes some things that um, allow you to 
work those in future but at the moment they do not work so just keep that in mind I find this is nice because I have other arcade machines it kind of it fits in nicely with those um, I have a reason for each arcade machine they have different games on them that you can only play on those arcade machines um, even though I have machines that emulate I have um, machines that are console based and then I have machines that are the real arcade hardware and um, they all do a different thing play a game that only that machine can play in that certain way so that is why I have chosen to go with this this way now if another reason oh, um, is because the original time crisis arcade machines number one and number two and number three and so on they are very expensive you're looking at um, thousands of dollars for those machines and they are huge this is small this is fairly inexpensive when you consider that I got this cabinet for a hundred dollars that was very cheap um, but I would imagine today if you kept an eye out you may be able to pick up a, a um, cabinet for under $250 and then you have your consoles in there and your TV and you're ready to go that's really really all there is to it um, a lot cheaper than if you went with the original arcade hardware and it plays a lot more games than your original um, would anyway and you don't have all the repairs that you would need to do when things go wrong with arcade hardware which they always 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 do um, eventually these do not have as many issues the old consoles and things they do have issues but they have issues far less than actual arcade hardware Thank you for watching the overview of the Time Crisis 2 arcade machine that I have. Again, it is a great deal of fun to have a setup like this, an upright setup where you're standing, it's always there, ready to go. Um, it's plugged in, all I have to do is flick a couple of switches and off it goes. There's not a lot of setup to do when you have a um, have a arcade setup like this as opposed to having to pull out the consoles, having to pull out all the um, bits and pieces, getting them all set up in front of the TV, um, making sure that you've got a CRT TV to play the PlayStation games with. This is all ready to go. So um, that is one of the reasons why I really like it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've got some ideas. Hopefully this um, inspires you to do something similar. If you've got any questions, please shoot them through to me. Um, if you like what you see, Please like and subscribe and um, I have more of these type of arcade videos coming up and I uh, do a bunch of pickup videos and things like that as well.